Hello and welcome to the brand new module. My name is Shantanu and we are going to get started with the hands-on data bricks. Uh, the first thing we're going to do in this session is mounting an Azure blob storage. Those who are coming from uh, the Azure background, blob storage is a storage service in Azure that enables us to store large amount of unstructured data, maybe uh, videos, audios, images, text, backups, or semi-structured data like CSV or uh, structured data in the form of could be JSON or uh, the schema-based data as well. Uh, why mounting an Azure Blob Storage is important because you need to have your data coming from somewhere, right? If you're uh, working on Azure Data Lake, your data should be highly chances that your data would be coming from Azure Blob Storage or when you have transformed your data, you have uh, made some analysis on top of your data, you would want to make sure that your data is kept on some sort of uh, place and that place going to be Azure Blob Storage. So we are going to get started with that. I already have my notebook created underneath the um, underneath my workspace, which we created in previous module. What we're going to do is we're going to first see what mounting we have under the, under the data and also one of the important point of mounting your uh, Azure blob storage because your clusters which you have created these clusters which you have created these are these can be deleted like somebody can delete it restart it and you want to make sure that whatever data analysis or data engineering you do on top of your data you want to make sure that even if the cluster is terminated or deleted your data should be persisted somewhere and that somewhere would be Azure blob storage gives you the flexibility that even if your cluster is deleted your data stays intact so first thing first let's probably um, use the databricks utilities and do an FS mount and see what mountings we already have. Let's probably pretty it a little. And if you see that it has started running the Spark job in the background, it ran few job. If you see it initialized the job, it had one executor and it ran this job. If you see now you have four mount points data sets ml flow results and registry these are by default mount points which comes up when you create a cluster now we want to create a brand new uh, mount and what we're going to do is we can either do it in scala or this notebook is created in python as you can see but you can start writing your code in scala as well remember how you do it you use the percentile sign and give uh, name it as a Scala and then you start defining your variable first is gonna be variable is defined in Scala using the val attribute and then you have got the container name you could just use the container name give it a variable and I already have a storage account with name as azpr blob I'm gonna do is what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a container now this container is where you could uh, just hold all your CSV. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a container as code red and just to uh, create come back to my notebook and I'm going to pass in my container name which is code red and then I'm going to create another variable which is going to be storage account name and my storage account name would be this one I'm gonna copy it right over here that's gonna be my storage account and now I'm gonna so now in order for Azure Databricks to speak with the storage account you need to pass on the authentication mechanism and that authentication mechanism would be using the SAS signature token we are going to generate that signature token if I'm gonna go to the uh, and you know uh, that you could get your token using the shared access signature or the access key uh, I'm gonna tell Azure blob to provide me access to blob files and allowed would be services container and object and I'm gonna generate the SAS token and I'm gonna copy it from here and put it right over here all right the SAS token is now kept over here I'm gonna create a config and the config gonna be this is coming right from Databricks which is gonna be file 
system.azure.sas and then dot because the the URL remains the same and then you can have your container name could just use the container name right from here and use the container name and then the dot because that's how your URL is formed and then your storage account which is going to be this name and then you'll have your static content which is going to be blob dot core dot windows those dot net don't worry about this this is going to be static for all of your um, container URL just that your container name and storage name would change now we're going to use the DB utils data break utilities if you uh, do a DB utils and then do an FS dot mount and underneath the mount what you are going to do is I'm just gonna beautify this little put them in the same so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna define the source now the source going to be uh, if you see right over here um, without the D display you would notice that the mount point has the uh, the directory and then the container name so we're going to use the source as WASBS that's the naming convention which the data breaks follows and then your container name which is going to be code red and then your storage account name at the rate storage account name and then dot blob dot core dot windows dot net if you're wondering how you are getting this URL you could just go to your Azure blob storage go to your containers and if you click on your container and go to the properties you would see the same naming convention as well and that's, that's what we're following for Databricks configuration as well and then the mount point actually that's the important point that's the mount point which you define so you're going to use the mount point as mount slash data store now this name could be anything mount is going to remain static and then you're going to give it a comma right over here and comma right over here as well and then you define um, the config now this config would have the parameter as extra config which we are going to point to the config which we have created right over here that that's going to be a map value and it's going to be config pointing to our sas token for the authentication and i'm going to close the braces right over here and yeah now what we have done is we have defined set of variables um, and we use the SAS token for authentication. We defined the config and we use the dputils.fs.mount. Now go, let's go ahead and run our query and see how it executes. We would see that it is running the query in the backend. And now it's what it's going to do is it's going to initiate initiate some of the executors. You see that the job is now running. And if you just click on the view, you would see some executors being spun up. Uh, and then you've got your task running. If you just close this one and if you see the output. Just going to close this one. So if you see the output, you've got the uh, SAS string, you've got the storage account and your now mount is blobbed and the result is true. If you're going to run your dbutils fs command, you would see that your mount should now be there in the form of mount slash data store and your source is your Azure blob storage. Now, one of the recommendation is to use the, instead of using the SAS token is the raw token you would need to use the secret variable and you can use the scope and the key 
so you don't want to expose your key for the production environment for dev or non products fine uh, but in production you would like to use the uh, get scope parameter and use your scope and token now if you wanted to unmount certain mount points you could just use the db utils if you just db do a db tab and it's going to auto complete fs dot u and hit the tab it's going to give you all the option and in the braces you going to um, would like to run the mount point which you would like to unmount so i'm going to unmount the point which we've just created and if i hit enter it is going to unmount the data store for us so this is one of the way you could just hook up your storage account with um, the data bricks to read or store data another way is to uh, use the terraform code so i just let this command complete uh, and you see that the data store has been unmounted if you uh, go back to our terraform code and just we just created a bunch of uh, storage account pools and cluster in our um, terraform creation automation video what we're gonna do is we're gonna create the uh, create the blob point which we have just created right over here using the data bricks query we're gonna use uh, you could just do the similar achieve the similar result using terraform as well so first thing first is the data bricks scope and that's going to be data breaks underscore secret underscore scope give your scope a name and then underneath the scope you could just give it a name as probably az blob and your initial initial manage principle is going to be users all right now you have created the scope uh, what you could do is you could just create the secret so that's going to be data breaks underscore secret and then you just could use the key which is going to be storage key and then the key name which is going to be blob storage key and then the string value which is going to be your this one azure rm which we have already created storage account dot blob account dot primary primary access key and you're going to map it with the scope which is going to be data breaks secret scope dot terraform dot name so what you've done is you've just hooked up you uh, authentication for authentication you using the primary access key of the storage account and that's what we use we use the sas key over here we're using the primary access key so now the actual code which we gonna use to mount our Azure blob storage with data breaks that's going to be data breaks underscore Azure underscore blob and then mount and then it's gonna be mount I'm gonna minimize the screen and I am going to feed in the cluster ID first cluster ID which is going to be data breaks dot cluster name of the cluster and then the id and then i'm going to use the container name container name would be equal to azure rm storage container which we've already created dot marketing dot name and then the storage account name storage account underscore name which is going to be azure rm storage account dot blob account dot name and then we are going to give the mount name 
which is going to be that's the mount name which we used in our query as data store so I'm gonna give it as a name as data store it is going to automatically append the slash mount with it when it's gonna create it and the auth type is going to be the access key access underscore key and then I'm gonna give it as a token secret scope which is going to be our database secret dot terraform dot name and then I am going to pass in the secret key as well which is going to be token underscore secret underscore key data breaks underscore secret dot storage dot key all right that's about it if you go back to our notebook and try to run the dbutils fs mounts command you would see that we don't have any mount with name as mount slash data store so what are gonna happen is uh, the terraform code is going to create the mount data store mount point for us you see that we have got only five by default mounts and we don't have the data store mounts let's go back to our terraform code let's spin up the terminal and just check if we have any errors coming up it's gonna be an apply once the apply has been able to give us what it's going to create it's going to create a blob mount and it's going to use the secret and the secret scope so i'm going to hit yes and just going to wait for it to create all right so the plan is now completed the plan has been done uh, if you start looking at the output it started creating the azure blob storage key and then started mounting up and if you see that there are three resources added if you go back to our notebook and try running the dbutils fs.mounts you would see that data store has now been created if you just hit enter again uh, try to run that command again you will see that directory is already mounted so you could just use an if um, uh, try and catch uh, mechanism right over here and just ignore the already mounted error all right, that's about it. This is important when it comes to reading data from Azure Blob Storage or writing your data to Azure Blob Storage. I hope this was informative. Thank you.